Welcome to our soap video series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We are working our way through the short letter of First Peter, right. and this is our second of three weeks right. in this in this book. Um, yeah, so we're going quick. Yeah, we are. It's only yeah. five chapters, and they're not really long chapters <clears throat> necessarily. So. Right. Um, well, I thought it was really cool last week, or one of the things that I wanted to make sure we, we pointed out, because we always have to cover that who, what, when, where, why. When we started. Yeah, when we start a new book. You know, why why are we in here? What What's going on during the time? Who wrote it? Who they write it to? All, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But... Um, we see we found out why last week and two there was a great here's why we do that yeah so the question arose who who is first peter written to yep. and it says in there who who's written to but it's up for a little bit of interpretation yeah um so you you had said jewish christians yep. and i had added ah, and, you know it could also just be gentile christians and you let it slide then <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the at the end of our reading um, we found that Peter said some words like, you are a chosen race. And he's talking to the people he's writing to. You yep. are a chosen race. Chapter 2, verse 9, just okay. to bring us into okay. it. Yep. Um, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Now, this makes a lot of sense if we're talking to Jewish Christians, right? right? Because it goes all the way back to the Old Testament. And in fact, we, we find these words in, in uh, um, Exodus and Isaiah and Malachi. Yep. I mean, these exact words. Right, yeah. They, that's, he's <laughs> quoting them. Yeah. These are things God had already told Israel. <laughs> right, right. So, so, so it makes sense from that standpoint. But then if you plug it in with, with Gentile Christians... Wait, we as Christians are a chosen race? A little bit less. Yeah. A royal priesthood? A holy nation? Yeah. We don't find that elsewhere. Right. Right? So so it really takes away from from being Gentile Christians back to Jewish Christians if you choose to interpret it that way. Yeah. And that and it really changes it changes the whole letter. Yeah, we try to um, you know, we we try to interpret based on the the words on the page. Right. Now, let's let's um, let what we don't want to say is that there's nothing in here for Gentile Christians. Oh, yeah, yeah right? right. Because so they, today we're going to see they are. <laughs> right. And so that's that's the difference. So yeah. that's that's part of our hermeneutics. That's part of our our method of interpretation. Is that this wasn't written to Israel? This was written to Jewish believers, Jewish Christians. Right. Well. If it's written to some Christians, there should be principles that can be right, applied can to use. all Christians, right. Right? right? But maybe not everything. But not everything. The, and that's why yep, we want to do key. this. Yeah, yep. Very good point. Very good point. Yep. So this week we're uh, finishing up chapter 2 and doing all of chapter 3. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it starts out with a good reminder in, in chapter 2. In, in chapter 2, verse 11, it says... Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to keep away from fleshly desires that do battle against the soul and maintain good conduct among the non-Christians. Um, and I, I think you just kind of brought, brought up what we're talking about. If we remember, Peter wrote this to um, Jewish Christians who were not in Jerusalem anymore, right? They were out. Scattered. Scattered. Yeah. And let's see, they were foreigners and exiles, you know, exactly what he said. <laughs> yep. You know, so so we need to remember that he's writing a letter to, to people who are Christians, but they're in a foreign land. So we're talking foreign rules. Yep. You know, they're trying to figure out how to, how to live. Um, and I think it's kind of cool. And I think that principle definitely applies to us. Um, yeah, I live in a nation... Um, you know, things are pretty easy for the most part, but, um, you know, I'm told not to always live in the nation, yeah. <laughs> you know, to uh, be from the nation, but not with, not within the nation. And I think that's a good thing to, good thing that's still valid today. And there is a principle that he, he says that there are fleshly desires that battle against the soul. Right. Really, you know, I would think fleshly desires battle against the body, and that's true. But they, uh, that yeah, really, good point. they right. hit our soul, right? These are spiritually fleshly desires hit spiritual have spiritual consequences, right? Right. Now, here's one of those places where I'm going to say, let's look at our translation, yeah. right? Because in verse 12, you just read it. Maintain good conduct among the non-Christians. Right. Now, if somebody's not using the net, they're reading at home out of a different translation. They're going to be like. 
Well, mine says, mine doesn't say non-Christians in most yeah. cases. In fact, I looked up 20 different English translations. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and only six out of the 20 say non-Christians here. All 14 of the others, and, and these are these are major, you know, yeah. these aren't like from right, you know, Wycliffe or Tyndale or anything, <laughs> you, know, you know, 600 years ago. These are all modern translations, including the King James, which I'm including in this. And they... Um, 14 out of 20 say Gentiles here or nations because the word is ethnos is where we get ethnic and, right. and, and in a Jewish context and this is why we made such a big deal if this whole thing is just written to the church in general then yeah we're talking about non-Christians you know your conduct among non-Christians but if he's writing to Jews scattered among Gentile nations and how to live then that word ethnos is, in a Jewish context, it, it's the same word that we would see in the Old Testament against Jews and the nations. It's Gentile world, right? So, so, so does this change that statement from brotherly affection to, or unselfish love to brotherly affection? So in other words, it says, um, 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 maintain good conduct among the non Christians. Right, so we're just going to say, as Jews, because that's who he's writing to, m maintain good conduct among all the Gentiles. Okay, okay, so every, so everyone, so right. more brotherly affection from, from a standpoint. Well, uh, maintain good conduct among... Actually, both. Yeah, it's really still unselfish. It's, it's really more internal, I guess. <clears throat> so that though they now malign, malign you as wrongdoers... They may see your good God, your good deeds, and glorify God when He appears. It doesn't say that they're going to glorify God now. It doesn't say that they're going to, you know, get saved or anything. But they're going to see. There, there's a distinction. So the spiritual side. I mean, the principle is true for Christians among non-Christians, but there is talking about something about Jews and Gentiles. There, they were being persecuted because they were Jews. Right. Sound familiar? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not because they were Christians. And I think that's a big, big distinction. Um, right. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, we're not persecuted because we're Christians, um, but because of other issues, right? Um, and so here, is, is there a principle that we can apply? Yes. But there's something that was even stronger for them. The primary application was you're being persecuted, as we'll see in the rest of our reading this week. You're suffering, even though you're not doing anything wrong. Why do Jews suffer even though they don't do anything wrong? Simply because they're Jews. And Peter knew that. And so he's saying, as you live among the Gentiles, be extra careful in how you live. Yeah, good point. And we do see that continuing on in chapter 2, uh, towards the end, yeah. uh, where, where they talk about submit to authorities. Yep. And again, we have this with Jewish Christians in a foreign land um, needing to submit to authorities. Yep. And, and there's, there's some rather lengthy things in there. Uh, but what I really liked is he brings it back to Christ yeah. in there. And, and basically he says, follow Jesus' lead. Jesus worked within the established rules of the Jews and the Romans, yep. and then, and, and yet he was still blameless. But didn't matter. He was, he was, uh, he was mistreated. Yep. And what did he do? He endured it. Yep. And that's what that's what uh, Peter's saying that we should do the same. Well, that's really the theme of this whole week's reading: is suffering or or, or living living Christ like, living a, a Christian life, uh, living a godly life, no matter what the circumstances are that are thrown at us. Right, and he's going to break it down into into you know a couple of different groups, but he's still going to come back to the big issue is doing life properly. Don't right. let what life throws at you. Don't let what haters throw at you. Don't let what persecutors throw at you knock you off the path. Yeah, on point, on purpose. That's what the path yeah. is about. Exactly. Uh, verse fifteen is right, is right there too, and, and I, I highlighted it because I don't understand why I have not seen this verse in Facebook. This seems like a perfect Facebook <laughs> verse. And, and it says, For God wants you to silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. And maybe maybe that's why, right? Because if you're <laughs> posting on Facebook, you're not doing good. 
No, but just, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you quiet the masses, you know, the, the people? And, you know, the answer, do good. Yeah. Just do good. Don't, don't worry about, are you still going to get in trouble? Yeah, do it anyways. And it's really within your sphere of influence, right? Right. The problem that we have with the internet and Facebook and Twitter <laughs> and, 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 and yeah. social media just in general is that everybody thinks they have a voice. Right. And, you know, that they're, they're, you know, people want to be influencers. That's the term, right? Yeah, I want to be an influencer. Well, you can be an influencer, but again, with only, with your sphere of influence, we use yeah. that term, influence, sphere of influence. Yep. Um, how are you using sh social media? How are you, you know, are you, are you, are you being one of the foolish people? Yeah. You know, are you getting, I, there's so many groups that I'm a part of that I just stalk because, <laughs> Even if I'm called out sometimes, hey, could you answer this question? Nobody's really listening to my, you know, they're just there right. to hear themselves talk. So, no, I don't think I'm going to jump into this one. You know, do I have an answer? Sure, I have an answer. Are you listening? Nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why am I wasting my time? Yep. You know, yeah, good. share pictures of cats is more <laughs> profitable <laughs> than sometimes some. the, the conversations. <laughs> sometimes I see pictures of cats and I want to share them with you. <laughs> uh, so uh, we also uh, do all of chapter three this week. Yeah. Um, chapter three has a couple, a couple of bigger sections. <clears throat> One of the first sections in there, or the first section, it starts with uh, wives and husbands. One of the categories he yeah, calls category. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, seven verses. Yep. And again, Peter is writing to Jewish Christians. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe they're both Christians, husbands and wives, but um, there's also the possibility that there's maybe a mixed marriage here and, going and on. And I too, think right? verse one really does talk about that. And it's it's it's, I think it's interesting. Maybe not. It's not encouraging, but um, women, as without getting stereotypical, as the more emotional of the genders, right? Uh, the more uh, they're softer, typically in their emotion and sensitive. And women tend to respond to the gospel faster than men do in a lot of cases. Right. And apparently that's not true just today. That was true back then, too. So you have a woman who is a wife who's come to faith in Christ and her husband, husband has not. It. Right. How are they supposed to, to, especially in this culture? Yeah. Yeah, now you have a cultural change, and you too. Have culture, yeah. Right, in there. Yep. So um, things that today would be... <laughs> scandalous you know for us for us to say right. we're kind of standard here yeah uh, but the but the whole idea is you know be subject to your husband um, a lot of people stop right there you know oh they're done but if you continue on and answer the question you know why yeah. why do they say that um, and you, you said the answer because sometimes the wives need to show their husband how to live yeah you know, this is the way we should live. You know, inner beauty is more important than external beauty. Yep. Um, tranquil spirit is in there. Yep. Um, yep. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to, and this is men and women both, you're not going to win somebody to Christ <clears throat> if you're nagging all the time, if you're right. uh, <clears throat> browbeating them, if you're, you know, uh, if you're lording over them, you know, I'm the husband, I'm the wife, you know, type thing. It's not gonna. That's not gonna win somebody to Christ. It's gonna push them away, you right. know. And so that's that's the thing. Verse seven. I love verse seven because there is something in here that I think gets misconstrued all the time. Yep. I was gonna bring it up. And the, uh, just, <laughs> oh, okay, I'm, I'm jumping you the gun. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Let me get weaker partner. Weaker partner, <laughs> man. I really hate. Honestly, this is one of those areas I really think that the net lets us down in the translation. Yeah. Because for two reasons, okay. Well, first of all, husbands in the same way treat your wives with consideration as the weaker partners. Usually, again, like you said, that's there's where a, people there's stop, a period right? there, but there's, there's, not, there's a period. not a period there. No, that's <laughs> right. where people stop and they're just like, I'm done, you know. And women right. are like, I'm not a weaker partner, and you know this this gets really ugly. Well, two things from the Greek text. First of all, there's no article in the Greek text. There's no the. It doesn't say that she, that, that she is the weaker partner of the two. It doesn't say that. Yeah. Secondly, and I don't know why they came up with partner. I think it's just trying to keep it within the the you know the, the marriage, whatever. But most translations are going to follow, and most solid translations are going to follow. Um, the Greek word is vessel, a weaker vessel. 
Okay, well, you know, well, I'm not just a vessel, I'm a person, you know, and again, right. it gets really stupid. But if you, if you actually look at the words on the page, and this is why we work with original okay. languages and stuff, husbands, in the same way, literally it says, live with your wives according to knowledge or with knowledge as weaker vessels. Now, what do you do? with a weaker vessel in your house. If you have that knowledge, what do you do with it? You, okay, you lost me, sorry. <laughs> no, so, so, so I'm gonna use the term, I'm gonna use, let's say, let's talk about China. What do you right. do with well, China? I was gonna say care for it and yeah. keep it yeah. under surveillance, keep it safe. Yeah, right. you display it, you show it, you use it, right. you bring it out when it's, when it's you, 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 you uh, uh, it's not common. You don't treat it as common, right? Right. You treat it with respect. You treat it with care. Especially you, you, you learn about it. How do I right. wash this best? I don't want to throw it in the dishwasher. It's gonna, you know that type right. of thing. And, and that fits in great with the second part of the verse, which right? everybody <laughs> wants to skip, yeah. right? Yeah. Show them honor as fellow heirs. Yeah. So if someone is a fellow heir, an heir, that means they have full rights. Yep. So there's not a there's not a greater than less than there. It's right. There's an equality there. People gets, come to this yeah. and say, you know, you know, husbands have to, you know, consider to treat their wives as if they're weak. That's not what it says. It says treat them with with knowledge, with care, with honor, just like you would something that's fragile, that's delicate. Not because necessarily they are fragile or delicate, but you tr you 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 treat right. them with care and gentleness and respect and honor, right? Not like a paper plate that yeah. you just throw away when it gets dirty, right? Yeah. In this right. way, nothing will hinder your prayers. The way we treat our wives actually is God watches apparently. So this is not an uh, this is not a verse that demeans wives. I think this is a verse when handled properly that actually it lifts, lifts them up. up. Yeah, right. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep going because we we still got a ways to go. So uh, really, the rest of I think the rest of the rest or a big part yeah. in uh, chapter chapter three is uh, verses eight through twenty, and it's what you talked about suffering for doing good. At least, yep. You know that's the heading, and I know the the headings aren't you know, in there, right. uh, but it's still never a good thing to see. <laughs> suffering yeah, for doing Suffering good. for doing good. Let's just skip this section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a verse in there that is frequently uh, a memory verse, uh, frequently said, and that's verse 15. But set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. Mm -hmm. And we generally use it as, hey, everybody needs to learn the gospel message and be able to give your elevator speech to it. You know, right. how do you give that in 30 seconds? How do you give a 20 second, you know, quick? If elevator? you have the opportunity, yeah. do you yeah. know it well enough to share it? Yeah, right? to, to jump in. Because yep. it says always be ready to answer anyone. Right. Right. But as we were talking about, there's also some context here too, that if you're living in a foreign nation, there's going to be. Uh, you know, uh, possibilities, and there's going to be places to jump in. Uh, so you do need to be ready. Yep. And so things like yet yeah, do it with courtesy and respect. Yep. Right. Respecting the people. You know, you know where these people are coming from. You know their beliefs. They may not know yours. So when you jump in, do it with courtesy and respect. And in the context of suffering, even if you're not in a foreign nation, I and mean, we are, we are Christians, are all foreigners and exiles. Our citizenship is in heaven. This world is right. not my home, right? In the context, the overall context of suffering, if we are living the Christian life well in suffering, any kind, of, it doesn't have to be persecution, but in any kind of suffering, people will notice that. And at some point, somebody may ask, man, how do Dude, you what? do yeah. that? What are you doing? How? Yeah. Why? How? And be ready Whenever somebody asks, and do it with courtesy, do it with respect. But they're asking. But they're, they're asking. You There's your opening. So make sure you're ready to take it. Yeah. Right. All right, good. And then uh, we end up the reading this week, uh, verses 18 through 22. Um, a little different. 
verses in here. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's going on? In, what's going on in here? Well, it's still the concept of, of suffering. Christ suffered, and then Peter sort of takes this left turn in verse nineteen, doesn't he? And he went and preached after after he was put to death. Uh, he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Yeah. So he's talking about, about Jesus. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. it's, a, it's a debated passage. What is exactly does this mean? Here, I'll just get to tell you what I think, and people can I mean, come up with your, you know, let us know what you think. I, I'd love to hear what you think. But basically, here's, here's how I see it. Jesus died, went to the grave, Sheol, Hades, whatever, okay? The place of departed spirits. Same place everybody since Adam had gone. And or, I guess Abel was the first to die. But everybody's, you know, until Christ there. And um, some of the people had looked forward to their hope, their Messiah, you know, the, the going all the way back to Genesis 3, the seed of the woman who would finally, you know, be victorious. And many were unbelievers, and they just didn't want to have anything. And then he points out the people who were disobedient in Noah's day and everything, right? So you got two groups of people down there. I think what happened is Jesus died, went down to the grave. He said, I'm here, folks. I've done it. Yeah, here's the, or I am. I, yep. I'm in the process of doing it, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. And yeah. in, you know, on Sunday, I'm going to be out of here. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, maybe he took some of them with him. There, there's some people who think that, you know, he, right. he took the, the believers to heaven at that point, you know, whatever. Right. But he, he, there's a victory that through his suffering he won. And he proclaimed that to the, those who had died, apparently. Okay. And Very so for, th for those who are believers, they're like, yes, finally, our hope has come. And for those who were unbelievers, it's like, our judgment is secure now. Right. Yeah, it you hasn't know, happened yet. Hasn't happened. Right. It hasn't been executed yet. Right. But, right. The, but the cross is the dividing line, right. you know, your believer or not. Which, of course, is true today as well. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, verse 21 talks about baptism, which now saves you. Um, I had forgotten to put that in my notes, because, but that is a big thing that comes up. Um, he specific people really get into a big baptism saves us up no in fact he specifically says it's not the washing of the water like it washes dirt off your body but but there's an internal baptism well, that's spirit baptism and it and, and the baptism of the holy spirit is when we believe in christ as savior he immerses us into the body of christ that that is the baptism of the spirit yes that, that is what saves us is. yeah right yeah and and so you don't have don't be scared oh baptism saves we're not uh, yeah, specific, a water baptism. It, yeah, right. yeah. Most of the time in the New Testament, when you come across baptism, it's not water baptism. You have to read water baptism into it. Most of the time, it's spirit baptism, uh, and um, when it's not, almost every time it says water, and yeah. it tells us that it's water baptism. So, right. pretty simple there. Next week, we'll do chapter we four and five. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Good. Well, if you're following along, I hope you found that useful. I hope that you found it helpful, interesting, you know. Um, uh, and, and as you go across these things, you know, come across this, you know, baptism now saves you, stuff like that. Maybe we didn't address it. You know, shoot us a question. Say, hey, what, you know, what do you think about this? Or share your own thoughts. We'd love to hear what you're thinking as well. Right, exactly. So uh, be sure to like and comment and share um, all these videos. I'm sure somebody else that you know could find them useful as well and we'll be back next week with the last two chapters in first peter see you then bye everyone